everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Geese Colorado. We are at Colorado Anime Fest uh, 2023, and I am here with Keith Silverstein, or Silverstein, sorry. sorry. And um, so the first question I wanted to ask you is, how did you get into voice acting? What has your journey been? Oh, Lord, what was my journey? I don't know. I guess my journey started uh, when, I, when I was a kid. I, I was very jealous of the other kids who knew what they wanted to do. I mean, whether it was whatever, they wanted to be a police officer or a lawyer or what, it didn't matter. The fact that they knew where to go to school for and what to do was, was fantastic. Uh, as I graduated high school, I still kind of had no idea. <clears throat> I kind of wanted to do a little bit of everything, which, uh, which is hard to do. <laughs> it's hard to make into a career. Uh, so I'd done some acting, a little bit on camera stuff, and was kind of just waiting tables, doing that whole routine, waiting for something to hit. And uh, my uncle actually called me up and he said, hey, I know you do voices and stuff. Um, would you like to audition for something I'm doing? I'm recording a documentary, and I wrote this poetry that needs to be read in different tribal voices. And uh, I was like, yeah, sure, I mean, why not? <clears throat> Excuse me. It's been a long weekend. So, um, so yeah, I, uh, I auditioned. I, I booked a few roles in it, but... Um, <clears throat> we went to an actual studio, recorded, there was another actress there. I mean, it just felt very official. And I, it's, it, voiceover was never anything I considered before that point as a career. I mean, I guess I knew it existed, but... Uh, so uh, I kind of fell in love with it. And so after we did that, I immediately did what everybody else does, which is like, okay, where are their classes? What do I need to do? So, you know, I went to a couple of different classes and, um, you know, finally started getting a little bit of work and... Uh, just really uh, stuck with it, which was kind of hard for me in life. I had a, a difficult time when I was younger sticking with something when it got hard. Um, I would get bored and kind of go, ah, that's too hard, let me go here. Not a, a good way, though, to, <laughs> to start a career. So uh, so luckily I stuck with it, and uh, I'm just glad that I did, and things slowly started picking up, and at one point I was able to retire from doing anything else, and that was my initial goal, was just to like do what I loved and uh, and you know not have to wait tables or do anything on the side. So here we are like 24 years later or something, so crazy. Well, I want to thank you as being a voice actor. I, I don't know if you know the impact you have on fans because for a lot <laughs> of people, anime is a stress relief. It's a way for us to kind of repair our mental health. So thank you for doing what you do. Um, and some of your characters are very iconic. I mean, you've done everything from Hisoka in Hunter x Hunter to Lupin the Third. So of your characters, which one has been your favorite to portray and how have you prepared to portray them? Ooh, you know, every it's, it's funny, we get that a lot, a lot of like, which is your favorite? And um, the truth is, they're a lot like, I know it's <clears throat> a little cliche to say they're like children, you know, they're all my children, but they are in a, in a sense, because everyone brings something different to the plate. So um, on one, uh, one character maybe was just an incredible, was just fun, uh, just super fun to portray. Uh, maybe another character, um, was difficult, but I learned a lot from that character. So there was a growth that I enjoyed that maybe affected my career. Maybe another show or character, I worked with a director that catapulted me into something. Maybe a show or a game brought me a little bit more notoriety, and that was a kind of a fun thing. So I attached that to all those characters. So they all kind of have something that I love about them. Like you mentioned Hisoka. Hisoka was just a blast. I mean, he was just, it's so fun to be him. I don't know that I, I don't want to be him in real life. <laughs> I don't want to know him in real life, which is similar to a lot of my characters. I'm like, that guy's a jerk. Uh, he's like, not a jerk, but other, you know, I play a lot of villains, so there's a lot of jerks. So I'm like, I don't want to know this person, but it's in a safe spot, in a safe environment to be allowed to play that character. Uh, it's like free therapy or a paid therapy, I guess, actually even better, right? I mean, come on, we'd all go to therapy if we could get paid to do it, right? So, so we go anyway, we all pay lots to do it. But uh, uh, so I, I never have had a real favorite because when I look back, you know, there's really something about, about each one of them. And um, the other thing that's interesting about the characters with anime specifically is we don't have a ton of time. A lot of people equate uh, voiceover with uh, like on-camera acting where you're getting you know, tons of money for a role and you get a couple of months to prepare for it. Uh, you can live the life. Like, I'm going to live for a week and be homeless so that I can see what it feels like. We don't have that kind of uh, time and we don't even have the information ahead of time. We frequently will book something without even auditioning in some cases, and just show up at a studio, and, they, and the director and, and the casting director are capable of what you've already done and what you can bring to that production, and they go, here's your character. We're telling you right now, this is who you're playing, here's who he is, here's what he's like, let's take a little clip so you can see the original Japanese, and uh, you kind of create that character right then and there on the spot. Um, you know, spend five, 10 minutes if you need to, 
coming up with uh, and everybody agreeing in the room, you know, whether you've got producers there and casting directors and who else. Um, so we don't have the time to do all that character creation in that traditional sense people think of. You know, definitely not like the, all the rehearsals you get for on stage mm -hmm. productions. It's a lot of cold reading, um, which makes it its own beast. Now, sometimes with original animation, you do have a little bit more time uh, to look over the script and come up with a character and kind of decide on some choices for your reads. So there is a bit of that, but it's never that. Like I had months and months to create, for example, you know, Torbjorn's character or something. It's that's not the way it works. Cool. Well, thank you very much for that. And one of the things is about being in this industry, you're around a lot of geeks in a way. You kind of have to be a geek or you become a geek being in it. <laughs> so I want to ask you, how do you define mm. the term geek and how has it been incorporated into your life? Interesting. Well, uh, yeah, I, it's funny because uh, I'm old enough to remember, you know, geek and nerd actually being like really bad terms, <laughs> you know, just really used in a bad way. And I was always a nerd. I was always and I define that by being into the things that were defined as nerdy, whether that's role-playing games or video games in the beginning, too. Video games mm -hmm. are so popular now, yeah. but just being into video games was kind of a geeky thing. You had to be, it was all about, like, sports, you know, uh, back in the day, right? So, um, you know, that type of thing was cool. But, uh, but uh, yeah, video games, anime, forget about it. I mean, that's, you know, D&D &D and anime were, like, as, as nerdy, as geeky as you can get. Mm -hmm. um, but now, all the things that originally defined term nerd or geek, uh, all those are very cool now. It's been really interesting to see that turn around. So I can, honestly, I can't tell you what that term means now. We use it, but do you know what I mean? Like we, people use it proudly. Oh yeah, I'm a geek, I'm a, I'm a nerd. You know, there's all, lots of podcasts and shows that have geek in their title proudly bearing that they're geeks. So, uh, so it's kind of weird because that word is completely flipped around. It more or less defines the kind of cool that you are, as opposed to, you know, how weird and different and isolated you are. Yeah, it's more mainstream now, right? It's way more mainstream. So, so yeah, I don't even know if there is a term now for the, the insult of nerd or geek the way it used to be. I don't know. I don't know that there is right now, and, and I don't need to know, so let's, get, let's keep it that way. <laughs> in your life like are, are you like do you consider yourself a geek like oh, yeah. you know what kind i know you mentioned like some video games and stuff sure. what kind of things are you into uh, oh, I'm a total, I'm a total geek. I have been uh, like one of my best favorite pastimes. I've been playing uh, Magic: The Gathering since 1994. Uh, I mean, that's you know, that's pretty geeky, uh, but also but geeky in a good way now. But it, that never mattered to me. I mean, it was always like that. I, I mean, I, I grew up on anime before I knew what anime was. I loved anime. Um, I used to watch like Akimba the White Lion and uh, Battle of the Planets, Speed Racer, like a Marine Boy. I used to watch all these old school. A trans or Z, um, and I loved that stuff. I didn't even know what it was, but I knew a lot of people were not into that stuff. Uh, so f for me, and then you know, I was always into you know acting, and you know that was not always a cool thing in school to be in the theater group. So um, yeah, I think I've just always been by definition. And I used to go to cons. I mean, cons are huge now, but I was going to cons when nobody knew. Like you could tell people, I'm going to come. What's that? I have no idea what that is. You go, oh, yeah, it's like every first Sunday of the month at the Shrine Auditorium and we go and they have like, you know, the stars from some of the, you know, cartoons are gonna be there and they're signing autographs and you can buy all kinds of cool prints and I'm like, what are you talking about? People had no idea. Uh, but I was like, you know, I got Freddy Krueger's autograph, yeah. You know, I was, that was me, so I'll always be. And then just since we're getting near the end, I want to ask, is there any future projects that you are able to talk about right now? <clears throat> what can I talk about? Well, usually if it's a future project, it's almost assured, uh, you know, that it's almost assured that I can't talk about it. But um, I'm trying to think of what's like just dropping right now. Um, I just did a really great, yeah I, yeah, I guess I can talk about it now. I mean, by the time, I don't even know when this is coming out, but uh, I played a, a great character on uh, One Piece recently, uh, Orochi, and I haven't, uh, I, I think it's it's a little bit out there because the, they're starting to show some of the episodes now, but uh uh, and they said I could announce it, so you, you can get the official announcement. And uh, you know, my first uh, dip into uh, the world of One Piece is One Piece Film Gold, where I, I played uh, the villain uh, Guild, uh, Guild Tesoro. And that was a blast, but it's been a while, and it was really nice to get back into that universe. Uh, One Piece is just a, I mean, I, don't, I think it is the quintessential, like, longest-running anime. I don't know if there's one, but I think that is the, you know, longest-running anime in terms of episodes and... Uh, so to, to jump back into that has been a blast, and hopefully everyone will enjoy it. That's kind of something I think I'm still working on now, but um, 
but at least I can talk about that now. And then my house was recent. Uh, Boruto recently I played Jigen. Um, so that was another another recent one. The new stuff though is all, you know, that's just how that goes. I've done, there's some stuff I recorded like a year ago that still hasn't come out yet. So there's all kinds of stuff I'm waiting for, but uh, all I can do is think it to you, ready? There you go. I know, cool, right? I'm excited about that. Oh, and that one, sorry, another one jumped in too. But, uh, We'll have to wait for those. Well, thank you so much for taking time um, to drop in with us today and for being here at sure. Colorado Anime Fest. Yeah. And we look forward to more projects from you in the future. I do too. What'll it be? <laughs>